Hey guys, this is Rose today from Creative Creation, and welcome to part two of our Beginner's Design Tutorial Series from Boxy to Foxy. Uh, we have a lot to go through today. We're going to start out with telling you guys what is best to mix and match and what isn't in terms of blocks and block design. Um, we're going to get started with building circles from scratch, how to build turrets or those pointy tower tops you see off there in the distance, and actually how to incorporate towers or anything circular into your builds. So let's get started over here with block design a little bit. Um, these are very general rules, by the way. They can be stretched, bent, broken, whatever you want to do. Um, in front of us, we have three kind of ugly looking walls. Uh, they don't look that great because you'll notice the texture on each one when it's like a stripe or a block of a certain type against another block of a certain type like that in a definitive pattern, it's it's messy. It's kind of like clothing, mixing like stripes and plaids. You don't want to do that. Also, mixing two blocks that are kind of similar in color like this, one gets washed out against the other, and it doesn't really attract the eye. So over here is an example of contrast, which is a good little principle to stick with if you want to build something nice. If you just stick with light versus dark, you'll always have a design that pops out. Over here is an example of having like a smooth texture block against a rough texture block. And that always looks nice too. It kind of gives it a more polished or realistic feel. Um, over here I wanted to show you guys an example of what you can do with those extra textured blocks. You can mix them together randomly and make it look like your wall or your pathways are made out of mixed materials. So that actually gives it a more intricate look. But when you have it just in like stripes or horizontal stripes of one versus the other, it doesn't necessarily look all right. Um, some of the more advanced builders or designers are kind of good at making those work with the surrounding areas and working with the blocks they have. But for the beginner's sake of this, uh, try and stick with um, contrast and rough versus smooth and you will always have a nice looking combination guaranteed. Over here... If you remember, if you watched the first tutorial, this is the house that we had, uh, well, sort of, <laughs> sort of the house that we were working on the last tutorial. Um, the left side of it, I changed over to spruce, wood, and stone just to show you guys what the difference was with that versus the materials we had already been using, which were birch wood planks and spruce wood planks. Um, as a general rule of thumb, Stone and wood blocks are like a classic match. You can't go wrong with them. It's going to look great. The only exception for that is birch wood. And I don't mean the birch planks over here. I mean the birch wood, the white wood with the uh, black spots on it. That's really hard to get to look nice. So I don't recommend you using that if you're just starting out designing and getting your stuff figured out. Um, I don't even use it. Like, <laughs> I've seen other people use it, and uh, they have great results with it. But it's it's really for specific things, or it's it's really got to be worked in there to make it work. It's it's tricky. I'll just say it's tricky. Um, as you can see on the right side of the house, I've gotten rid of the roof over here. Like, it used to be symmetrical. So we had that, you know, diagonal roof coming down, and then it was symmetrical on the right side. Got rid of that, rounded it out, and we're going to get started in showing you how to do that. And you don't always have to build your own circles from scratch. There are plenty of websites to show you exactly how to do it, or to even, I mean, give you a schematic of a circle, so that you can get that perfect circle every time. You just type in a radius, and it'll generate a circle or a sphere for you. Um, I don't generally use those anymore. I did when I started out. Um, I got started building the Roman Pantheon, and I did the dome on that, and when I tell you that it took forever, I mean, I spent weeks on end building that dome. It was just circle after circle after circle, and it was massive, and I would literally fall asleep in Xbox Live parties building this thing, because it was just boring and monotonous, and I know my circles now. Um, I don't generally call upon those websites that give you the schematics, unless it's like a huge circle type of thing, and I need it to be exactly perfect. Um, but for anything, like for building sake, like smaller buildings, houses, stuff like that, I just generally wing it, and I'll show you how to do that here. Uh, what you'll want to do is decide how long you want the face of your circle to be. And when I, when I say face, I mean like the longest part. There are going to be four different 
longer strips of your circle. So there's one, two, three, and four. And what I did here is I made it five wide because, as I was saying in the other tutorial, I love my windows. So I wanted at least a three wide window area or the option to put the windows in like that and have it framed by the stone. Um, if you wanted to, and I know this is not the same material, but you could do something like this with your windows if you want to put them in, or you could just be a singular window kind of person or a no window kind of person. It's really up to you. But for this circle, I did five so that I could have, you know, if I wanted to build up, I could build like nicer windows in my tower. Um, when building a circle that's larger than three, like if your face is larger than three like this, you're going to want to have a horizontal couple of blocks next to it, um, like this. You have two next to it, and whatever you want, do on one side, you repeat on the other. So say you build your face first, you build your two, and then you come over here and you build another two. And then I decided to go with one, and I placed one over here. And you just pivot that design and repeat all the way around. And the reason for the horizontal blocks, and as the circle gets really big, you might even go up to three and then two, you'll have to play with the numbers in between to see what pattern works best and makes it look more rounded. Um, to suit your building, but this is an example of what happens when you don't put those horizontal blocks in and you just connect it with uh, diagonal blocks like that. It doesn't really look circular. It's more of like a hexagon shape, which can work fine as a building, but if you're going for that circle, it's not quite going to work. Um, over here at the house, that rounded edge right there, all I did was I counted the blocks on the side of the house from front to back. And I got, I think, 16 or 17. And then I came over here. And I laid out those 16 or 17. I won't count them now. Um, as the diameter. So I laid that straight across. That's all that was there. And then I just went in even amounts to mess around with it. I did three over here. Then I did three over here. And I basically did the same pattern here that I did with the five-face circle over there. Um, I don't even know if that face terminology is correct. That's just what I call it, I guess, uh, for the sake of teaching you guys. Um, but I did the same pattern and it worked all the way around and it actually does look like a circle. So after that, all I did was cut the circle and I think I did up to like four. Yeah, I did a little over half the circle. Whoops. And this half right here that I'm cruising over, I just attach this schematic to the side of the house. And this is always good to do on just uh, on the ground. Just lay your blocks out, get your pattern going, and then you can decide, you know, um, what looks right, what doesn't. You only have one block deep, so it's not going to be too much of a problem to destroy everything if you have to. So, yes, I applied it over here to the side of the house. And I used the same blocks that the house is already made of, those birch planks, and I used the spruce planks on the bottom. And all I did was extend everything out. I extended the spruce wood over here around the side, and I extended the roof around the side with some uh, stone slabs and some uh, spruce wood staircases upside down, just to give it a more uh, polished look and to make it look like the roof didn't just abruptly end in the middle of nowhere and it just kind of continued around and it completely transformed the shape, as you can see. And you can really mess around with this. Like, you could knock out the bottom of this house right here on the right side of the door. And just leave that as an overhang. And you could have, like, a wraparound porch. You could put a garden in there. Whatever you want to do. It's really up to you. Um, just play around with it. Like, build different size circles and connect them together using straighter blocks. And use the same materials just to smooth it out and see what you can come up with. It's a lot of fun to experiment with. Over here, moving on, we have like just a very basic tower made out of that one, two, three, four, five, five blocks across. And I made it like 25 tall, I think, just to show you guys how to build a turret on top of a tower. And a turret is that pointy thing you see at the top of a lot of towers. Um, couple of guidelines for those. You'll want to make sure that if you want an extra pointy top to it, you have to have an odd number for the face of your circle. Like this is five. If this was six across, then by the time you got to the top of this roof, this point would be four 
you couldn't go any smaller than that and have it be even. It would just be four. You could always just bring up one of the corners of it, especially if it's really tall and nobody can tell if it's centered or not. You could do it that way. But since this is semi-close to the ground, it's not the tallest tower in the world, um, you'd probably be able to tell if it was off-center. So that's rule number one. If you want an extra pointed top, stick to the odd number for, like, the face of your circle or the longer side of your circle. Um, rule number two. Uh, go too high when you build these. All you're doing is you're building one in from the circular design of the stone or whatever you decide to build with. Here it's uh, cobblestone. Build one in and two up, and then one in and then two up. You're basically doing a two deep staircase all the way up to the top, to the top, till you get to the one in the center. And when you get to about here, it looks like your tower top is way too big. Like, it, it, it will seem like it's not proportioned to the rest of the tower and you messed it up. But when you fly to the ground and look back up at it, you see that it actually does look pretty de decent. Um, another rule of thumb is, well, I like to extend the top a little bit. You can do like one, two, or three. I think one looks a little bit stumpy. One out. Two out is decent. I did three just to exaggerate it a little bit more. Um, I really do not recommend building out three and then building all the way around. Um, do one layer at a time because if you do all three and then try to make it go all the way around this, you will get confused. You'll lose your spot. It'll mess you up. Trust me. I've done it a thousand times. It messes me up. I can't do it. Um, so just take one layer out, go all the way around in the shape of your circle, and then go another layer out. And you're not just going to go one out. I'll try to show you. Not just one out like this where you're going to have the, the cut there. Make sure that it connects. I don't know why I did it that way. Make sure it connects together, if you know what I mean. Like, don't do your, your corners like this. See what I mean? Like, you, you can go straight up to this corner. Make sure those connect so you have an actual ledge that's continuous going around when you do it. Um, I wanted to show you over here what happens when you don't do too deep on a turret. And when, another thing that I did when I first started out on Minecraft, I was building this beach house, and I must have tried a, a dozen times to make turrets on this house, because I had four different distinct towers where I kept all my goodies. And every time I did it, it didn't look right, and I could not figure out what was wrong. I think it clicked like a couple of builds later that it had to be too high. It just doesn't seem like it when you're up here building. When you're up here, it looks okay. Like, it looks like a point, and it should work, but it's all a matter of perspective. Because when you fly down to the ground and look up, it looks so stumpy. It doesn't look pointy, it looks rounded. I probably could have brought that out more, but because it looks so flat compared to the other one, the brim on the bottom would have, like, drowned out the rest of the top. We probably wouldn't be able to see most of the top from down here, as you know, we can't already. So that's another good thing to know when building those tops. Just try to keep it tall. Um, you could even go three high if you wanted to, especially, I guess it depends on the size of your tower. Um, see that? I don't even remember what I did. That's why you don't go three around. <laughs> I have no idea how to even fix that right now. Um, yeah. I'm sure that looks completely morphed now. One more thing before I go, and I meant to bring this up earlier. Um, with circles, you don't always have to stick to this kind of thing. You don't have to do a completely round circle. You can also make ovals, but if you start out with a circle, all you have to do, and again, this isn't the same material, you can drag this out once you finish, just to make a like a template of it on the ground. See if I get them even. Yeah, I did. And then you just keep the same pattern that you had before. What was it? Two, one, two. And then go to this side, do the same thing. And then connect. And I totally messed that up. What did I do? I bet I didn't have those sides even. Nope, I didn't. That's awesome. We'll fix it. Okay.
the beauty of Minecraft creative. You can fix anything, and it's so super easy. I didn't even put that one right. It's really late at night right now. I should be sleeping. But I figured I'd get this out and um, then go to sleep. But yeah, see what I did there? I just extended the sides, made them longer, and used the same pattern I have over here. Now it looks like a giant like Coke tab, like a can of Coke on the ground. I have a habit of building those. When I built the the diaper safety pin in uh, our Hungerland map, I totally did that. It looked like a Coke can. I had to change it. Um, that's basically it. Just practice a lot, adding your circles together, trying to build towers, build those tower tops. You could take something like this that's rounded on the house and bring it up. Like, I could have kept going up with this past the top of the roof, and it would have enclosed the circle... And we could have put one of those turrets on top of that, and that might look pretty awesome. Um, but the only way you're going to know is if you try it yourself. So I hope you do that. If you need any help, just leave uh, questions and everything in the comments, or you can hit us up on Twitter at Creative Creation. Happy building, and don't forget to think outside the